Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for being here on the theboxingmartin.com, and welcome. It's a pleasure uh, to be here. Uh, thank you guys for having me. Um, I've heard a lot about you guys, and you know, it's, it's, it's real nice being here. Question one, where were you born and raised? I was born in Ventura. I was raised, I was kind of uh, going back and forth uh, all over here you know, California. I, actually, I, was, uh, I lived in L.A. for a few years, too. Uh, I lived here for a few years, then I moved to L.A. for a little bit, and then uh, I moved to uh, Canoga Park, and I was there uh, till about when I hit uh, junior high. And then uh, after junior high, that's when I moved here, and then I haven't moved since. And what would you say your childhood was like uh, being raised here and uh, being, you know, raised, I guess, out of Oxford? I was raised with, I went to a school, a little school next to Malibu because all the schools were filled up and uh, I was just raised with a lot of uh, white people, you can say. And uh, actually, I, I don't know, it was, it was a little different. When I moved over here to Oxnard, it was it was a lot different than, I, than how I was being raised over there in uh, Canoga Park, um, meaning... There's uh, the population the population here of uh, uh, Mexican Americans or you know Mexican uh, Latinos. Uh, there's a lot more here than how I was being raised over there. I'm not saying there was a lot of uh, pure white people, but uh, as of being raised, and it's a it's a total different total different population, you know. Uh, uh, and uh, over here, it was I, I was more comfortable because it was you know a lot more of my people and. Uh, as in over there in, in Canoga Park, I, at the time I didn't see it, you know, any difference, you know, because you know I was I was a young kid, uh, but it, it was good. I didn't have a bad life. It was good. Um, my mom had her job, regular job. Uh, same with my stepfather. They all had a job, so I wasn't raised, you know. I didn't have a bad life. I always had a I had an okay life. Did you have a lot of friends in high school and stuff like that? And what kind of a grades did you get, or what kind of a student were you in in school? Uh, when I moved over here, that's when I started, uh, you know, uh, I was in junior high over there in Canago Park. My seventh grade year, uh, I moved over here. We sold the house, and we actually bought my, my grandpa, Eduardo Garcia, you know, the former trainer of Fernando Vargas and my uncle Robert Garcia. We bought their house. They sold it to us. That's whenever they moved to, to their new house. In junior high, I, I, I hit seventh and eighth grade year here. I always had good, good grades. Um, I, I think boxing kept me in line. Not that I was a bad kid or anything like that, but um, it kept me in line where uh, I had to make a lot of sacrifices. I I started boxing right away in my, my seventh grade year. Sixth grade year over there in Canova Park, I started boxing, introduced me to boxing. But uh, when I moved over here, my grandpa, he told me, um, Mike, Mike Garcia, my other uncle, uh, my brother, David Garcia, and uh, my cousin, Danny Garcia, they told us that we're all going to start at the same time. And... Uh, Pretty much, if we really want to do it, we're going to do it and go all out, you know, uh, give it our best. And we did. And we started, I started off in seventh grade year here, and that kept me in line because uh, uh, after school, go straight to, to the gym. After the gym, go back and do homework. And then after homework, just, you know, go to bed in the same cycle every day. You know, even though we know that you're, of course, your family to boxing, uh, did that motivate you, or is that how you got into boxing yourself? Well, actually, you know what? Uh, not really. I, I knew that my, you know, of course, that my uncle was a boxer. My grandpa trained with Fernando, and uh, well, I used to go into the gym all the time. And uh, you know, when I would come in town to watch, you know, I didn't live here at the time, but when I would come, I'd see them training. And uh, actually, you know, I liked the sport, but it wasn't really that I really wanted to do it. Uh, but when I was over there in, uh, and when I lived in Canoga Park, I was in soccer. I was in rolls in soccer for like three, four years. And uh, me and my brother were. And my mom, I remember one day, I remember this day specifically. I remember she, we were in the car, and I was in the back seat with my brother. And my mom and my stepdad at the time, uh, they asked me, they asked us, actually, um, what did we want to do? Did we want to get a job? I didn't know, you know, I didn't know nothing, you know. But uh, she asked, okay, if you guys don't do a sport, you guys got to get a job. So pick a sport, you know, pick another sport if you guys don't want to do soccer anymore. Because I was tired of soccer, so... She mentioned baseball, football, basketball, uh, all the sports she mentioned. And she mentioned boxing. And I was like, man, well, I don't want to get a job. You know, in my head, I was like, man, I don't want to work, you know. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to try boxing. So they took us to the local, um, one of the local gyms there in uh, um, Canoga Park. And uh, from then I started and I just uh, picked it up. Uh, I had exhibitions. I did a few exhibitions there. And uh, actually one of the times, one of the exhibitions that I, uh, that I had, I invited my whole family, Robert, all my aunts, my uncles, uh, 
my grandpa and uh, even Mike, little, you know, Mike at the time, Mike Garcia, and uh, he, he wasn't fighting at all. Not, he wasn't training. He wasn't doing anything. And uh, I remember, uh, you know, I, I went in there and, you know, uh, my grandpa rat me. That was my first time he ever rat me. He rat me. You know, uh, I, I got in there and I did an exhibition. Everything was good. And then one of the guys that was supposed to fight, uh, his fight got canceled. You know, the exhibition got canceled because he couldn't find an opponent. And there was Mike. Mike was there, and uh, they asked him, "Hey, um, do you want to do a do you want to do a little exhibition?" And Mike, he, he never trained. He never. He just had it naturally. Uh, he used to spar with my with his cousins, you know, over here whenever they would come in town, just put on some gloves and try. It. But he never actually trained. And uh, they asked him, and he said, "Yeah, yeah, I'll do it." So uh, from then on, you know, he liked it, and then that's when. Uh, we moved over here, and uh, we all got into it at the same time. And uh, from here, was serious. That's when we took it serious. And uh, look at him now. You know, I mean, I, I really have always said, and I think I've even put on my page, I, I, it's a safe bet to say he's going to be the next world champion out of here. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's a, it's a safe bet on that. I, I really think he's going to do it. To me, uh, to explain, Mike, uh, he's, um, he's a very intelligent, intelligent person. Inside the ring and outside the ring, he he's told us a lot of things. Or oh, just the way the way he talks, the way he talks to you, the way he explains things is, I uh, I admire him for that because he's. I mean, who wouldn't want to be a, a smart person? You know, a really smart person. And and Mike is just he's a very smart person with with anything. He'll explain anything. Like uh, here in the family, when we have a question, or we we want to when we want someone to clear clarify it for us. We ask Mike. We we go, oh, ask Mike. Mike knows it all. Like, Mike knows it all. Like, it's, we go to him because he knows it all. Like, or if he doesn't know it all, he'll find out, you know, anything about it. Or he'll tell us, you know. Like, that. that's Mike to us. You're obviously from one of the first boxing families in all of boxing. Easily the first boxing family of Oxnard. Mm-hmm. Of course, uh, Robert Garcia, your uncle, being the first world champion out of here. Of course, the big G, Eduardo Garcia, being your, your grandfather. And in a way, he's also the godfather of uh, boxing uh-huh. here of Oxford. Yeah. Does that ever come into play in your mind when you think back and say, man, this is my family. You know, I got my grandfather here, Robert being the first champion out of Boxnard. Um, You know, him, of course, tra- training guys like Vargas also, who's the second, you know, b- uh, world champion out of Oxnard. Your, you know, your uncle, your other uncle, uh, uh, Mikey, most likely about to become the next world champion out of Oxnard. And, of course, your other uh, uncle, Danny, who's a top trainer in boxing as well. Does that ever come to play that you're also a, a step in that family and you have this high expectation of, of you also in the ring? Uh, let's, let me start with, first, I'm, I'm, I'm proud. I'm proud of my family. Um, hopefully I could do some close to what they're doing right now. You know, Robert, you know, let me talk about Robert first. To me, he's, he's, he's a top trainer right now. Uh, uh, one of the best, if not the best trainer out there right now. Um, to become a world champion and and then start off young and, and make champions, it's it's I'm sure it's it's, it's really hard, you know. And uh, I'm proud of that. Uh, hopefully one day uh, I can do like I said, get close to what they did. You know, hopefully I can you know even become a world champion because not everybody makes it. Um, uh, Mike, of course, he, he he's on the right steps right now, and uh, as 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 we can all see, you know, he's doing great, looking great, sharp. Um, no doubt, uh, future world champion. So, uh, you know, got it. He not only that. Uh, I don't. I'm. I'm not only see Rob uh, Mike as just a future champion or someone that's doing boxing. He's doing great with his life. You know, personal life. Uh, when it comes to, um, you know, now he has his house. He's got his cars. You know, uh, and he keeps it all to himself. You know, nothing. Uh, nothing too flash or anything. He's he's a, he's a very humble person, and I admire him. Proud of him too. And uh, even Danny. You know, Danny. Uh, We've all had our uh, differences when it comes to you know him, and uh, it's it's fine. But he's he's still doing great for himself. You know, I don't I don't have anything against him. But uh, he has he's 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 got Victor, and Victor's you know he's looked great in some of his fights. And uh, you know, all of my family's doing great. You know, I I, I hope I I do some in boxing, and uh, so that I can do some in boxing as well. I'm actually trying to, of course, like anybody else, become a world champion, and uh, um, hopefully I can get there. What do you think of your of your grandfather uh, Eduardo Garcia? Um, how was he in your life, or, or what kind of role did he play in your life? Man, I can't believe I I, I didn't mention him right now, but uh, man, he was I can call him father figure. 
uh, my grandpa, just uh, he kept me in line. He kept us in line. He he's uh, showed us. He showed me. I say us because it's my my brother and me. Even my brother turned pro. David Garcia he turned pro. Um, we've all learned what even Robert. Everybody's learned what we know because of my grandpa. You know, not only that. Um, uh, uh, I can only say that we were scared of him. So a lot of times we wouldn't get in trouble. We wouldn't do things that would come back to him. So uh, just, uh, you know, he's a great person. He, he loves his family. I, I can tell you that. He loves his family. He'll do anything for his family. And, uh, you know, I, I love my grandpa. And, uh, you know, he he's a very, very, very respected man in boxing. You know, even by his family, by his well respected. And we all love him. And uh, he's done a great job with everybody. What was it like the first time you walked into the boxing gym? What was it like the first time you went up there to spar? What is it like for a young guy like yourself to get in the boxing ring, and how was it for you? When I was see Robert train, that's whenever I got in uh, the ring the first time. I Actually, I remember, I don't know if this was the first time that I sparred, but that I remember, I think it was. He told me, here, I'll give you like 10 bucks or 5 bucks. I don't know how much it was to get in the ring with this kid that was in there and you know they just wanted to see me spar you know and in the gym in our gym when there's two kids that are you know that never sparred before or, you know we we want them to spar and we want to see someone you know you know not get knocked out or anything or just want to fight we make him spar you know so that's what they did to me my robert paid me like five or ten bucks i'm not sure how much it was and uh he i sparred for the first time uh, i remember i wasn't scared or anything um because i think the same size as me you know i just uh I don't know, I just did it for the money at the time. <laughs> I was a kid, you know, so. Would you say you were a natural at it, or is, was boxing something that you had to work at it to get good? No, I had to work on it. I, I believe I had to work on it. Um, I, I can fight. I know I can fight, but I had to work on it. Um, my great grandpa, he's, he's the one that was on us most of the time. And, uh, no, I, I really had to work on everything. Um, I remember when I first started, I, just, I picked everything up because I wanted to learn so bad. So uh, I would do everything and anything. You know, even now, of course, but I remember I would want to, you know, learn. So I would even shadow box at home, you know, things like that, you know. And what was your amateur career like? What was your record at the end of when you were done with that? At the end, I, I did um, 40 fights, actually. We didn't fight much because they didn't take this to, to a lot of the shows. We we used to just, um, I remember like my, my sixth or seventh fight already was in a tournament. We didn't go to a lot of shows because uh, my grandpa said that, you know, we, we'd get a lot of fights in the tournament. So uh, 45 to me is a little bit compared to a lot of other fighters. You know, like Brandon, he had like 300, 400 fights. Even Victor, uh, another 300 fights. You know, uh, all the other kids, you know, that that we've trained with, they, you know, like even now, out Henny's Mendes, you know, like 300, 400 fights in one book or something, you know. Those are a lot of fights. That's a lot of experience. I only had 40 fights and... Uh, uh, so far, I'm doing good, and even Mike, he, he had like about 90 fights or 100 fights. That's still, to me, you know, not that much, but look, look at where Mike is at now in the pros, you know. Amateur is a lot different than uh, than the pros. Some people uh, and some fighters in, in the in the amateurs are so good, but in the pros, they they don't make it, you know. So, in the amateurs, I, I think I, I got the experience from sparring and from my grandpa and Robert and uh, them telling me and, you know, watching and I think that helped me out a lot. We didn't have the, the amateur style where it was speed and all that. We had more of a pro style, so it kind of didn't mix in the amateurs. I, I lost, you know, quite a few times, but never outpointed by, like, so much or anything like that because it was always a good fight. Your pro debut, what do you remember about the first fight, getting there to the arena, knowing that it was going to be this transition from being an amateur fighter with all the headgear, the bigger gloves, and the T-shirt, and then on top of all that, knowing that you had a big expectation of you because of who your family was and, and their background. What was that first day like for you? What was it like before you went through the curtain? I was very happy, actually. I was excited. Um, I wasn't nervous at all. Uh, when, I, when I tell everybody that I was not be- they don't believe me. But actually, I wasn't nervous at all. I was excited. At the time, I was signed by top rank. You know, Cameron Duncan was my manager at the time. So I felt like I didn't need to worry about anything because I was with the right people. And my grandpa, Robert, I wasn't nervous. I was confident, you know. I was confident that I had a good team, that I am, well, at the time, you know, that I was headed with the right set. And uh, I wasn't worried at all. Um, without the headgear and all that, uh, it didn't worry me. Um, actually, I, I, I remember I, was, I tell my brother I wanted I wanted to feel that how it felt with little gloves, you know, eight-ounce gloves and how it feels to be in there. So 
I fought at the Hard Rock. Um, my pro debut. I did my pro debut at the Hard Rock. It was I. I won. I think in the second round uh, with a body shot. I mean, it was pretty fun. Uh, I just I remember that as that as being fun and just uh, we were all happy. I was just happy that I was turning pro and uh, I was actually. You know, not a lot of people get to turn pro or, or actually get signed by top rank and, and be in, in, in that uh, spotlight, you know. And uh, at the time, you know, it was, it, was, it was just fun. I was excited. Um, pressure, I'm uh, not pressured by the name. I'm, I'm not really pressured by the name as in our name, uh, Garcia, and living up to it. No, no, I'm not, I'm not pressured at that. I'm more pressured as in me getting to my goal. Uh, I think maybe not everybody. The way I think maybe it's a little different, uh, but to me, I have that failure in the back of my head. Not that I'm a fail, just that thing that pushes me where I say I'm not going to fail, you know. Uh, that's what motivates me. It's more of that, more that I don't, I want to get to my goal, you know. Uh, boxing is, is, is my life, and uh, I've been in it for so many years already. I don't want it to uh, to end, you know. So uh, that's why I train hard, and I want to make something out of boxing. And it's not really that uh, the name of, of, of Garcia that, no, of course not. Of course I would love to, to be in the spot where Mike is at right now or, or be as successful as Robert is, of course, you know. But um, I'm not them. Uh, I want to I want to put my name out there and then say yeah okay another Garcia did it you know and I want to keep uh, keep doing it you know for my family as well but it's it's not the pressure that my family is doing great I mean I'm glad and I'm proud of my family but uh, I want to do something for myself as well. About a year after your pro debut there, you had a couple of losses and then stopped fighting for about what two three years and then you came back in the game. Did that layoff have to do with your losses? And did that kind of take away the motivation to keep going? And were you actually thinking of never fighting again? Um, yeah, actually, I needed. I'm, I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad that I took that break. Uh, those two losses, those weren't me. I remember actually um, my first loss. First loss, I remember I fought with. Uh, I'm not sure what his name, but anyways, um, Mike Peralta. Yeah, Mike Peralta. Okay, so I fought him, and it wasn't me. Like, like I just, I didn't, I didn't want to do it. Um, Rick Lopez, uh, one of the guys that, um, you know, from the amateurs and everything that we know, him through, through Victor and Brandon, uh, he was, he actually fought in that undercard. And I remember we that night, day before on Wayne, you know, after Wayne, he, we were, we were kicking it in, in, in our rooms and we we're eating pizza or, or you know, eating. And uh, I was telling him, hey man, like, man, I'm trying to like get motivated, like. I don't feel like I'm motivated enough. He's like, man, what are you talking about? Like, you're about to fight tomorrow, dude. Like, you know, get your shit together. You know, he was telling me, like, to listen to some music, you know, do something. I was like, yeah, man. And that's what I did on, on, on day of the fight, actually. So I was shadow boxing. I was like, all right, then maybe I'm going to get motivated right now when they start rapping me. They started rapping me, and I was like, Robert started rapping me, and I wouldn't get motivated. I like, I just, I'm like, come oh, on, man. I got to want it, you know? So I, I put some music, and, uh, 50 Cent, 50 Cent was my, my favorite at the time, so I would put off 50 Cent music, the ones that would pump me up, and it wouldn't, I was like, ah, you know, like, damn, all right then, so um, we, I was like, okay, then maybe when I get in the ring, you know, or I start walking out, my music comes out, then, I'll, and then I'm going to get motivated, so then I was waiting, and my music came on, and I was like, I wouldn't get motivated, I was like, all right, maybe when I'm in the ring, you know, and I got in the ring, and it didn't happen, first round, same thing. First round happened, I was like, man, okay, maybe in the next round I'll feel better. I'll throw a little bit more. And the second round, third, you know, all that, it was a six rounder. And then the six round, that's when I actually, actually tried a little bit, you know. You know, I lost. I didn't even feel the loss. Like, it was more like I was, uh, I, I don't want to say depressed. I wasn't really depressed. I was just, I didn't want to do it anymore. So I, the loss, I, you know, I didn't feel the loss as, as in I, meaning it wasn't, I, like, I didn't care. Put it that way. Yeah, like, I didn't care that I lost. I just wanted to get it out of there and, and that's it. And then my next fight, I remember I told Robert, yeah, I'm ready, I'm ready. But I did it for the money. I remember I did it for the money. I needed some money at the time. So I did it for the money and I lost. And after that, I was like, you know what? I'm not going to do this anymore. I would go to the gym here and there, but I would tell myself, okay, you're going to fight. And then I would say no anymore. And I need that long break. So I'll just keep the break off. You come back after about a three-year layoff or so, Belos, and, you know, you come back, you get four wins. The first three by, by knockout. <laughs> fourth one by decision what do you feel about those wins and how do you feel how did you feel on your way back up that road that you were trying to hit in the first place when i came back i was so motivated you know um not that i'm not anymore you no know, but at the time you know um, i came back appreciating the game more you know appreciating boxing appreciating the sport in general you know the fact that in those three years you know i had to work i had to you know, um, you know hustle for money and not not in that way, like drugs or anything. No, no, just, you know, I had to come up with money, you know, and I had to get that time alone uh, made me appreciate the fact that right now I'm getting paid, you know, uh, 
good money, you know, for, for boxing. And, and not only that, I, I spent, you know, what can I say, uh, two hours in the gym, uh, another hour running, you know, uh, in the morning, another hour at night at running, you know, it's, you know, it's time where uh, most people spend 12 hour shifts like me, like where it's not, work, you know, it's uh, something that you love. I, I work, um, uh, staying fit, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we do get, we fight for a living, but, you know, I'm in shape. I feel good. But the money's pretty good, you know, it's decent for, you know, to live. And, uh, I don't know, I appreciated it. So that made me want to do it all as well. Like, um, the fact that I was going to do what I love and, uh, make decent money for it. That's pretty much what in life you, everybody does, you know, uh, try to do, you know, um, uh, make good money and, and do what you love, right? Um, so, you know, that, that motivated me to come back and, uh, um, I did and, uh, I'm doing uh, good so far, so uh, I'm not planning on stopping. Would you say that during that three-year layoff that there was something you had to find within yourself? You had to find yourself before you found the sport, before you found what you really loved, and before you really got motivated again? Is that what that layoff had to do with, and, and is that where what you had to do to come back? You know, I've actually never really been uh, asked these questions before, but, you know, you could say that, you know, because... During those three years, uh, you know, I, I did have my boy, um, uh, my little boy, Julian Garcia. I actually, you know, I had to go back to work. I, I helped Robert out as an uh, assistant trainer. You know, there's a lot of things that happened that, for example, um, I was working. I was working a, a, a good job. I had a good paying job, and uh, it was a good job. You know, I have benefits. Um, I was getting paid pretty good, you know. I had my own apartment, my own car. uh brand new car um i was doing that by myself so it was a good job and uh the thing was that i didn't see myself working not that it's bad because uh, everybody works and uh, it, as soon as i retire i'm sure i'm gonna get back to work uh, with anything because i know i i was supposed to be fired you know um at the time i was like man i'm not supposed to be working and i'm supposed to be boxing there was just no way that i was gonna get back into boxing because uh, i had a good job I had to stay working because I had my boy, my apartment. I had bills, you know. So I was like, man, there's no way. There's just no way um, I could get back into boxing. But I knew I was supposed to, you know. So what happened was that um, I got in a, a, a really bad car accident. There was a head-on collision. I was going about like 70. I just didn't see the stop sign. I was on my way to work, actually, in the morning. Uh, what happened was I just didn't see it. There was two stop signs. Uh, I just didn't see them. And I went through, and I hit another lady uh, 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 head on. It was, um, uh, I was, she was, I'd say, by like 20, 30, because she was turning. So it was a nonstop turning lane left, and uh, she didn't stop So because she had no stop sign. So I got in a head-on collision, and, you know, from there, that's when a lot of things changed for me. Oh, uh, well, yeah, I was in the hospital for, for like a week. Uh, I had broke my sternum. I broke my collarbones. I had knee surgery, actually. Part of the car went inside my knee and, you know, other minor bruises. So I was pretty bad. What happened after that was that um, it gave me time, you know, um, I was on disability. So uh, I was pretty much out, you know, for like about two months. You know, uh, I actually got laid off after that. So uh, what happened was that um, it gave me a lot of time. That's what pretty much uh, gave me my, my next chance in boxing. It gave me a lot of time, and that's when I started helping Robert out. I actually started training myself because I had a lot of time, you know. I, I started getting back in shape and helping Robert out, and uh, from then on, just uh, started working with him. And when I worked with uh, Brandon, because I was helping him train Brandon, I helped him train, uh, I helped Robert train uh, Brandon for uh, Acosta, Miguel Acosta, when he won the title. I was actually, that was my first time in the corner, and actually, when he won the title. So uh, after that, that's pretty much. After that, uh, that's whenever I said, you know what? I was training with these guys. I was sparring with these guys back in the day with Mike, top featherweight, my uncle. So why not do it? Why not get back into it? Um, I got a lot of time. You know, why not give it another shot? You know? A lot of time also, I had problems with my with my baby's mom. So, uh, you know, that gave me that extra push to get back into it. You know, um, show everybody that I can. I can do something with my life. Uh, and is that what motivated you to start fighting again? That time, like I said, it made me a appreciate the sport um watching mike and brandon and everybody that i was at the time you know like uh, back in the days training with and uh like even like yeah i, I can say even victor you know the fact that they're they're 
they're up there now, you know, and well, I just not like them, but you know, at the same time, we kind of turned pro, like somewhat, you know. Um, and it sparked that fire again within yourself. Yeah, I was like, man, like, how come I'm not there yet? You know, like, how come I'm not doing it? What happened? You know, um, it just motivated me, it motivated me inside to to get back into it. And uh, you know, uh, of course, you know, like I'm not gonna lie, I, the money is great. You know, when you work hard for it and uh, uh, you get to where you want to be, the money is great. So um, and uh, and you have, like. I have a boy now. I want to spend as much time as I can with my boy. Boxing gives me the gives me the time because I can have him at the gym while I'm training. You know, like I don't know. It's just everything about boxing is it, it, great, and that's why I want I want to get back into it. And you're related through Robert, through your mom and him, our brother and sister, or through your dad? No, no, my mom and Robert are brother and sister. I've only met my dad a few times that I remember. You know, after you know, so. Uh, did, did that ever affect you in, in uh, your decision to become a boxer? Did that make you a tough kid? Or No, uh, no. Honestly, no, no. I, I don't think so. Uh, I, I, believe that, uh, the, I believe that the person you are is the person you will be for a long time. You know, like, uh, yeah, little things change your mind, but not your heart. You know, that's what I think. And uh, I didn't get into boxing because, you know, I had hatred in me because of him. No, nothing like that. I never, you know, I don't hate him. I don't dislike him I don't you know nothing you know just things happen and I live with it but uh, uh I didn't have hatred because of that and I'm not I'm not a I don't got a lot of hate in me or anything like that where that's how I take my anger out no no nothing like that just you know it was uh, something I fell in love with and uh, I wanted to do you know it was a family thing you know as well and you had a, a fight a few months ago that was canceled out over in Arizona and it was canceled out pretty much last minute I think you talked about that um you know, uh, a bit ago, but, you know, uh, what, was that a letdown for you? Was that something that uh, unmotivated you? Um, it, it got me mad uh, only for, for the reason that uh, my whole family uh, drove over there, you know, eight nine hours, bought tickets, spent money uh, on their hotels, on gas, food, and uh, even my great-grandma, she's about 87, 89 or so, and she even went up there, and for it to be canceled last minute, that's what pretty much got me mad, the fact that uh, it was right before I ran my hands, you know, um, something that fucking shouldn't happen, you know. Um, I mean, come on, that's what got me mad. Not the fact that I got the fight got canceled, because uh, I've been in the sport, and I, I've seen a lot of things, and, you know, even the biggest fights get canceled, you know. Um, it's nothing big, you know. I, it didn't happen again, you know. My fight's actually set again. For this month on the 26th of May in uh, Tucson, Arizona, so with the same guy, so uh, uh, I'm motivated with that. So we, uh, it's not the fact that I got canceled; it's just the fact that oh, it got canceled. And even the main event there got canceled with uh, Margarito there. Uh, what yeah. did you think about that? Um, well, I mean, like I said, things happen. Um, it'd be a letdown for all the people if it happened, you know, right before the other opponents got got wrapped. You know, <laughs> it'd be a whole different story, but. Uh, you know, it happened in time, and many things happen. I, I get it. You know? So, uh, I mean, as long as my my fight still goes on, then I'm just fine. You know, otherwise, man, it's gonna be a disappointment again. And you're finding a guy by the name of Jose Roman. Uh, why a guy like Jose Roman who has a record of 13 and 0? I mean, is this because you said, like in the past, that you had uh, at one time lost your motivation for the sport? Is this uh, is this because you feel like you need a guy like this for your record with the record like what he has? Or is it because you are looking that good in the gym right now at the moment and that good in the ring? Uh, it's a lot of things. Uh, one of the main things is that uh, beating Roman is going to take me to the next level. Um, he is a good fighter. I've seen him fight, of course. and But uh, I don't think he's faced anybody like me. Um, just like me, you know, the six out of the seven guys that I fought, I've knocked him out because I was supposed to. You know, uh, it would look bad if uh, I don't knock anybody out, you know. If I just fight and uh, he has power, he has, but I have power as well. Um, but uh, Robert told me, um, he told me, you know, two before the fight was made, uh, you know, you can't be babied in boxing, so uh, we got to step up. And uh, he, he asked me, and I said, hell yeah, you know, I'm fucking ready, you know. Uh, I got my camp fights, and uh, I'm, I'm ready for this. But like I said, he and my mom will take me to the next level, and that's what I get, so. So I'm not letting anything get in my way. 
So like you said, you're stepping up uh, in level here. Are you preparing for this particular fight in a different way? Or is it just another day in the office for you and you're doing the same thing that you always did? Training-wise, I'm doing more, of course. I'm doing more than, uh, than what I was before because uh, this is an eight-rounder fight. So I'm only, um, now I'm, I can do less than eight rounds of spawn, you know, for, whereas before it was six to maybe eight rounds of spawn. You know? um, um, the running is different. Dieting is different. I'm only I'm not bad in weight anymore because I've been training for so long for this fight. Everything's the same, but just to step up uh, a lot more, you know. Uh, uh, but but uh, I still I'm still working with uh, Cecilio Flores, which um, he's a uh, you know he's cooking for me. Um, he's helping my conditioning, which is great. You know, uh, Robert training with Robert, um, our game plan, um, working with our game plan. Well, you know, to bottle my my whole team, you know, they're uh, good people and they're you know, really good. Our uh, the lot, you know, another he's one of my friends actually, and uh, he's helping me train as well. I mean, we're doing the same, but just stepping up the game a little bit, you know, stepping up pace. Uh, on May twenty sixth, how are we going to see you? How are we going to see Javier Bellos Garcia? How how are we expecting you to perform on that particular night? And how are you finally going to come through and show uh, the eight hundred five what you're about? Well, you know what. Pretty much, I'm doing my, the best that I can. There's, uh, I'm training a lot harder, of course. Uh, I'm trying to be the best shape in my life so far. You know, I, I'm gonna do my best. You know, uh, this is a big, like I said, beating Roman is gonna take me to the next level, and and that's what we're trying to we're trying to get at. You know, uh, of course, God, you know, I'm training my I'm training my best, and uh, I'm gonna be in the best shape of my life, and you know, stick to the game plan. And uh, after this, guys, the limit, you know. Well, Javier, thank you very much, Bellos, for being on here and uh, and, and yeah, giving you, giving us a word. I hope we get to talk to you there a little before or after the fight and see uh, you know what happened there. Thank you very much for your time, for being here on theboxingbar.com. I hope you the best of luck, of course, like I always do with all my 805 people. And uh, you're always welcome here, man, to come back at any time for any reason. And uh, thank you again for being here. Uh, no, I appreciate it, man. And actually, I want to say something uh Thank you, you know, Boston Bar for having me here. And uh, if anything, uh, my fight might be televised. If anything, it's going to be a top-ranked card. For sure, going to be streamed online. So uh, catch it there. Other than that, uh, yeah, for sure, I'll be, I'll be hitting you guys up again. And uh, I'll let you know how it went. And uh, uh, another get another interview from you guys. Thank you very much, brother. And for sure, you're always welcome here, man. Sounds good, man. Thanks.